Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Amen, amen. Some of you are sounding like you're not happy to be in the house of the Lord today. Are you happy to be in God's house? Are you happy to be in God's house? Amen. Well, praise the Lord with me. Heavenly Father, we invite your presence there, Lord. Because there is none like you, Father. And we come just to offer a morsel, dear Father, of our appreciation for the things that you've done, the things that you're doing, and the things that you're going to do. So I pray, Father, that this service there, Father, will be like none other, that our souls will be shifted in line with the kingdom, Lord, that our minds will be lifted on heavenly realms there, Father, that our receptors will be open to your words and to your messages that speak a word of change in our life. So, Father, we commit this service there, Father, into your hands, to lead us as you would see fit there, Father. So everybody that ministers today, from the musicians to the speakers there, Father, will speak a word in line with your will. So your people will say, Amen. In your name I pray, Amen. Amen, Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. We thank God for this opportunity to be in his house another day. If you're able to stand, why don't you stand with me? It is such a privilege that we can always come, you know, into the house of God. And we come not to, we come to see each other and to say hello to each other, to fellowship. But, all, but we come to glorify his name. So Father, in this moment, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you spared our lives to see a new day. Father, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Lord, we may have had different experiences this week. Some may have had a great week. Some may have had a challenging week. Some may be going through a rough time. But Father, I thank you that regardless of where we find ourselves this morning, Lord, we thank you that we are here, that we are in your presence. And so, Lord, as we lift up our hands, as we sing to you today, we pray that our worship will be acceptable in your sight. Father, cleanse us. Wash us, Lord. Renew the right spirit within us, Lord, so that as we worship you this morning, that our worship will come up to you like a sweet-smelling savor, Lord. Receive the praise. Receive the worship this morning, we pray. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We have come to glorify the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. We have just come to glorify, glorify your name. We've just come to glorify, glorify your name. Sweet. 
sweetest name, Jesus, the sweetest name I know. When I'm telling wherever I go, glorify, 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 glorify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have come to glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. We magnify you, Lord. It is to you that we give our worship. It is to you that we give our praise. Because you have done so much for us, Father. We bless your name. We lift our hands and worship to you. We lift our hands to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, and we say thank you. We are grateful, Lord. Hallelujah. It is to you I give the glory, and it is to you I give the praise, for you have done so much for me. I will bless your holy name. It is to you, Abba Father. Oh, no one else will do, and I will praise you. 
in our mouths to say thank you for the things that you've done, but not just for the things that you've done, but for who you are. Father, we recognize who you are, that you are Lord and you are God, and there is none like you. And so we praise you. It is not about how we feel. It is not about what we're thinking, but because you are worthy of the praise, we lift our hands. We command our hands to praise you. We command our legs to praise you. We command our mouths to praise you because you are worthy of the praise. There is none like you, Father. We bless your name. We magnify your name. We glorify your name in this place. We glorify your name because you alone are God. There is none like you. You alone are God. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness. We can never, te- we can never tell all that you have done. We can never begin to tell of the wondrous things that you have done. But Father, in our worship, we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. strength it is by your power we thank you that it's not by our might it's not by our own power but it's by your power that we stand and so we bless you we command our mouths to bless you we command our hands to bless you we command our feet to bless you because you are God because you are God because you are God we're not praising you because of what you've given we're not praising you because of your hand we're praising you because of who you are you are Lord and you are God you are Lord and you are God you are Lord and you are God. You are Lord and you are God. We bless your name. I wish you would understand that there is power in your praise. I wish you would understand that there is power in your praise. It is when we begin to praise that things begin to happen. And I'm not just talking about the things that we want. I'm talking about the spirit and the power of God. When the power of God is in the house, things begin to break. Things begin to happen. We don't need to pray when the presence of God is in the house. We don't need to ask for anything when the presence of God. But when we begin to use our mouths and declare the Lord, you are God. Lord, you are God. Lord, 
told you are God. There is something happening in the spirit. There is something happening you may not be able to see, but there is something happening in the atmosphere. Lord, we declare that you are Lord and you are God in this place. You are Lord and you are God in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are Lord and you are God. We're standing before the King of Kings. We're standing before the Lord of Lords. We're standing before the King of Kings. We're standing before the Lord of Lords. Father, we bless you. We bless you. We bless your name, Lord. We bless you, Lord. You are Lord and you are God. I will give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise. You alone I long to I will give you all. 
are worthy of our praise, Lord. You are worthy of our praise, you alone are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory all belong to you alone. Are worthy of your worthy, worthy, worthy. Your worthy, worthy, worthy. Your worthy, you alone are worthy of my worthy, worthy, worthy. You're worthy, worthy, worthy. You alone are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Bow down and worship you. 
magnificent you are. You are great. You are Lord and you are God. We reverence you, Father. We reverence you, Lord. King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. We reverence you. Holy God, we reverence you. We reverence you, Lord. Come on, church. 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 Hallelujah. Do you serve a great God? Hallelujah. Give him your fruits. Hallelujah. 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 How great thou art. Hallelujah. My God, my God. We serve an awesome God. I personally can declare how great my God is. Hallelujah. My God, he delivers me. He keeps me. He restores me. Church, about a week and a half ago, um, I was coming home from work, a long day, and I was driving on the M25. And the spirit of sleep took my body. I fell asleep at the wheel. I crashed into another car. But God saw fit that no harm came to me, neither the other passenger. How great thou art, how great thou art. It could have been so different. It could have been so different. When we recognize how God steps in sometimes, we have to step back and say, how great thou art. We just want to take a moment just to sometimes just offer up a prayer and come to the altar and just whatever is on your mind, whatever burdens you, whatever is in your thought process right now, we give you the opportunity to turn it over to the Father. So I'll ask uh, my sister Erica just to be prayerful over this and I invite anybody who feels fit just to come to the throne of grace and leave it in the hands of the Father. Amen. Even if it's a prayer of just thanksgiving to say, thank you, Lord, feel free. Have that liberty in Christ. Amen. We serve a God who is great, who can do more, who can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask. Please come. Don't look to your left. Don't look to your right. If you know that you are in need of prayer today, we serve a God who hears and answers prayer. He hears every cry. He hears every worry. He sees every anxious thought. You are a great God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We're not coming to man, but we are coming to the King of kings and to the Lord of lords, the all-powerful, the almighty, the all-seeing, the omniscient God. We're coming to you this morning because you are a God who sees all things. Father, for every single person that is here before you, you see and you know. You know each person so intimately. You know the very number of hairs on their heads. That's how much you know. And so, Father, we present every supplication. We present every challenge, every issue, every situation before you because you are a God who sees and knows. And, Father, we pray and we ask that you you would intervene. Father, whatever the situation, we may not know, but you know. We 
we pray that you will come through, that you will break what needs to be broken, that you will make a way where there seems to be no way, that you will provide where provision is needed, that you will bring healing where healing is needed, that you will bring peace where there is unrest, Father, where there is anxiety and worry, that you will bring your peace which passes all understanding. Father God, we call on you, whatever the issue is today, Father, we pray that you will meet your people at their point of need. Father, we invite you into every situation. Father, we call on you because we know that you are a God who is able to do even more than we can ask. Father, you said that we should bring all of our requests before you. And so we bring them this morning. And we ask, Father, that you will hear from heaven. That you will hear from heaven. And you will answer, Lord that you would answer, Lord Jesus. Father, we know that you have a purpose and a plan. And I pray that, Lord, we would trust in your purpose and your plan. Sometimes we may want things to go a particular way, but Father God, help us to trust that you know the right way, that you are a God of perfect timing. We may want things in our own time, but Father, you have a time set for all things because you see and you know. Father, you cause everything to work together for our good. So Lord, help us to trust you today. Where we lack faith, increase our faith today. Father, where we need extra, extra reassurance, we pray that we will find that reassurance and encouragement today. We ask, oh God, that you will hear according to your will and you will answer every prayer today. Every prayer today, Lord Jesus. Father, may there be testimonies that come, Lord Jesus. May there be testimonies that come. We thank you and we present all of these needs. In your name, we ask these things. Telling you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. And let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, PCF. Good morning, PCF. Come on now, come on now, come on now, come on now. Good morning, PCF. Thank you, thank you. Sound like somebody is still waking up. Amen. Um, I just want to say uh, welcome, one and all. Senior Pastor Mother Das, welcome. Um, do we have any visitors in the house today? Visitors for the first time. Just, just stand for us, please. Don't be embarrassed, we're family here. <laughs> so feel free to stand if you're visiting with us for the first time. Amen. If not, if you're just visiting with us, we are happy to have you along to our service. Praise the Lord. To you at home online, welcome to our Sunday service. Amen. Um, our Pastor Dave is away at the moment, relaxing and resting, but please keep them in prayer. Uh, he needs rest, amen, and he needs prayer because... We know sometimes the work of God is not easy, amen, but it's necessary, amen, amen. Right, I have a few notices, but first and foremost, I want to ask the question, how many people love this church? How many people love this church? Oh, show of hands, amen. How many people feel that some of the ministries working in this church are worthy to be supported? Yes. Amen. Yes. amen, amen. You know what, yes. I'm going to want you to keep that energy. Because here's the thing, we got some dates for your diary that we need your commitment to be present for those things, okay? So in the same way, I don't know if the ushers saw how many people said yes, just <laughs> follow with them afterwards, amen? All right, so we have a prayer meeting every week. Um, we have our prayer meeting online. If you do not have the Connect, um, the the link to get in, it's connect at tpcs.org.uk. Hopefully I've said that correctly. Tuesday evening, we have prayer meeting on Zoom um, between 7 and 8. Wednesdays, we have our lunchtime prayer meeting between 1 and 3. And our evening prayer meeting and Bible study between um, 7 and 8.30. We have our Saturday morning prayer meeting between 7 a.m. and 8, 8 o'clock. I was going to say 8 p.m. Um, 7 a.m. and 8 o'clock on Saturday morning. Um, 
And we also have our Kingdom Women um, Fellowship. They meet ev- alternate um, Thursdays. Sorry, alternate Thursdays online um, between 7:30 and 9:30. You can see pretty much um, any of the Kingdom Women in the church and ask them for details, and they will point you to the right uh, direction. We have the Kingdom Women, while I'm on them, they have a pampering day for next week, Saturday, the 20th of April. Next week, Saturday, between 10 and 4. It kind of makes me jealous that the men ain't doing something similar, you know, where you, you could barber us up, even though. So between 10 and 4, you could come and get pampered, Massage, I'm, I'm not even sure what's on the bill, but it's going to be a, a, a momentous day. You could get your pedicures, manicures, and get looked after by the kingdom women. Um, it's also an ideal opportunity for if you have somebody that needs a little, you looked at their toes or you looked at their fingernails and you're thinking, <laughs> needs a little love, amen, praise the Lord. Bring them along. <laughs> Bring them along. Bless them in the name of Jesus, amen. <laughs> so that's next week, Saturday, between 10 and 4. So all of those that committed to these events, please show up, show yourself clear, um, or in person, sorry. We also have um, the Kingdom Men. They meet every Thursday online and in person. Um, I, I haven't seen Daniel, but any man that you can see, hold, or in touch and distance of that will benefit from socializing with men with Christ-minded thinking and want to grow them, please point them in the direction of the men's ministry. It's well worth it. We need grounded kingdom men in this world, don't we not? Amen? (coughs) We have on the 27th, that's two weeks' time, our karaoke evening. Now, um, I was a little disappointed to hear that the sales are, it hasn't sold out as yet. A little disappointed. But in the same way that some of you showed that energy and that commitment, get your tickets after church, praise the Lord. Yeah, We do not want it to be like an event that we have to cancel because there's no commitment. Amen? Let's support these things. Let's support the church. Let's support the teams that's putting it together. Because when we fellowship together outside of this, we grow together. Amen? Amen. So that's Saturday, uh, the 27th of April. I don't know if it's on the screen. Do you have... The details for the events. So you can scribble it down in your diary or take a photograph of it. Or you've got the QR code that links you to Spring Into Action. So all the details will be in there. On the very next day, the 28th of April, we have our Bible challenge. That's not on that one. We have our Bible challenge. Pastor David, who works so tirelessly to put these things together, to grow our biblical knowledge has put together this evening where we'll be looking at Romans 8, is it? Ah, you see some of you are clued up. So I know you're in the team already. Romans 1 to 8, yeah? And we are going to be having an evening of, um, should we say, competition, um, games, quizzes, entertainment. Now, there, there are some established teams. If you haven't found a team as yet, Please, at the end of service, I think there's a list. I don't know if all the spaces are filled, but if you want to be part of the team, um, please put your name down. If not, please come along and support. It's going to be a phenomenal evening, and it's ne- um, not next time. It's the 28th of April, and it's from 4 p.m. From 4 p.m. So note that down in your diary. We have the sponsored walk, as you can see, on the 20th of July. For those of you who do not want to do running, sponsored walk is, is the next alternative. You get your exercise, and you'll have lots of pleasant conversations along the way. Um, all of these are geared to, we're always trying to build our ministries, so we do need the resources to be able to expand the offerings that we have to our community. So all of these events, we need to be um, supporting, getting sponsorship from your colleagues and so on and so forth, so we can make it really, really a successful event. Amen? Amen. Now, you all have gone quiet like you stopped committing to coming to these things. You know what I mean? But I'm going to proke you and prod you all the same. We got our coach trip to Bournemouth on the 17th of August. 
If you haven't booked, please see one of the events team. Book your place. Book your family's place. Who remembers the church trips of old? Yeah, back in the days, I had a little Afro, and I remember going on coach trips. <laughs> it's hard to imagine. I'm being on the window seat and leaning, and by the time you reach, you have a whole different hairstyle, <laughs> coach window hairstyle. Um, but please come along. And even the smells of the coach. Remember, you used to walk on the coach and all that fried chicken you're smelling and the food. Come on now. Come on now, church. Let's do that again. Let's bring back the old days of coach trips and fellowship. So Bournemouth, 17th of August. You've got enough time. Book your holidays either side of that so we can all be together. Amen? Um, we've got our couples conversation. It's not on there. Um, coming up the 11th of May. Now, Vox, um, prayer. How many people are blessed to be married? Many, yeah. So um, we recognize that sometimes it is good to fellowship and have conversations about marital journeys, learning new skills, sharing experiences, and growing together. It helps us to navigate the bumps in the roads, yeah? Amen. So on the 11th of May, we'll be having a couple's conversation. The last one was very engaging. Um, so we decided to do a part two. We spoke about, listen, no topic is off topic. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's grow together as a family. Um, now, we had um, the note up showing our convention in October. Um, again, a date for your diary. Our conventions are always an awesome series of days where you just kind of, it makes sense of the themes of the year and it brings it all together in one kind of final message as it were so we can kind of feel equipped to go on and and infect our communities and do what we need to do in spreading the gospel praise the lord okay right at this moment i'm gonna allow the ushers to wait upon you for your tithes and offerings Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. Many are the blessings that you give on to me, blessings overflowing like a mighty sea. Lord, I want to thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We pray that you bless those who were and were not able to give today. Father, we pray you accept this, we pray you accept this gift as we offer it unto you. May this offering strengthen and support your foundations. 
In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Just a couple of more announcements. We do have our Sunday school, the second and the fourth Sunday of every month. <clears throat> so today at 1130, the young people between 3 and 18, they can make their way upstairs for Sunday school. Um, also, um, the cleaning team for the church, they need some more help. They need some more volunteers so that they can help with the rotor in keeping this place of worship as clean and clear as possible. So please, if anybody has some spare time and would consider this a blessing to the ministry, um, please see Brother Dexter or Sister Debbie Morgan um, to just put your name on that rotor just to help keeping this, cl this church clean and clear. Uh, we, the young people, they have their Fuse Friday ministries um, every Friday between 6.15 and 8.30, I believe. Yeah? 8 eight o'clock, 8 o'clock. Um, please encourage your young people to come. Uh, I can't stress it enough that the things I hear on the news all the time, we do need young people to affect change in their environment. So please, give them the best opportunity to come along, socialize, and get those nuggets of truth that would inform a world that's full of lies and deception. Amen? These influencers, they're not influencing on the right thing. So we need these young ministers to be influencers of their environment. Amen? Amen. Right. It's uh, a little time to celebrate. Um, I've got a couple names down on the birthday roster. Uh, somebody very close is celebrating their birthday today. Um, Sister Gail, <laughs> I believe it's your birthday t today. Amen. So I suppose she could be exempt from singing a birthday song to herself. <laughs> and is Sister Diane in here? Sister Diane Jacob. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Your birthday is tomorrow, I believe. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sweet 16. Amen. Mm. You see, black don't crack. <laughs> Apart from the heels. Um, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, is there anybody else celebrating their birthday between today and next Saturday? Just stand, please. Stand. Oh, and, and just, oh, it's way. Happy birthday, brother. Okay. Praise and worship team, would you just bless them with a birthday song? <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Your scripture reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 12, verses 2 to 3. Surely, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the well of salvation. Amen? Amen. Is there anybody or any couple celebrating their anniversary this week between today and and next weekend, any anniversaries in the house? Okay. Well, we're going to keep praying on that so we can fill every week with celebrations of wedding. Amen? Amen. To God be the glory. Okay. We've arrived at that appointed time where we have our speaker um, of the hour. And the young people at 11.30, you can make your way upstairs. <clears throat> um, this young man has been in PCF for as long as I can remember, he was the former 
um, leader of the men's ministry. Um, he has a comical take on many a situations and scenarios where we've always had debates upon scriptorial stuff and spiritual stuff. And many of times I've just relented and said, you know what, I can see things from your point of view, but then we'll both be wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I've seen him grow in the ministry and um, become one of the, the pillars, should we say, of our, of our Edmonton PCF church. Um, his long-suffering wife, Charm sorry, his, <laughs> his dear wife, Charmaine, um, has been a, a, a pillar in the ministries of the church, the food bank. She's been very instrumental. So I just want to acknowledge how you see a blessing in action when you see God take someone from where they are to where they've become to do what he's prescribed them to do. So as this young man comes forward, we'll just breathe a word of prayer over him. Heavenly Father, you know your manservant, Lord. You know every hair that is and isn't on his head there, Lord. You know him intimately there, Lord. You know him beyond measure. You have filled him there, Father, when sometimes it seems there's emptiness. Lord, I pray now that whatever you've filled him with to feed this congregation there, Father, it will minister in a way that we will go home filled with your word and know that we've been in your presence. <clears throat> Father, open our hearts, open our ears, open our minds there, Father, so we be receptive to your truth there, Father, and cover this young man and his family, Lord, in a special way. May he never lack in any area there, Lord. May he find you and find your favor in everything he touches, Lord. So, Lord, I pray your covering hand as he opens your word, dear Father, and administer to your congregation. In your name I pray. Amen. Good morning, church. PCF Tottenham. I'm distinguishing because we have two churches now. PCF Edmonton and PCF Tottenham. Good morning, PCF Tottenham. Nice to be here. Nice to be here. Um, just, just to say that thank you for having me. I am nervous. That's why I'm pausing. But we're going to get over that in a second. Don't worry about that. Yeah, let's, don't worry about that at all. And I'm going to apologize to my brother, uh, Sam, because he's heard what I'm about to preach already. So, sorry, bro. You sure? I'll change it. You sure? Yeah. Cool. Nice one, bro. <laughs> so, we'll be reading from, and our greetings, mom, dad. We'll be reading from Matthew 7, um, chap chapter 7, from verse 7 to 13, 14, and then 21 to 23. So if we can have that up, please. And it reads, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a snake? If you then... Though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Verses 21 to 23. 
enter. No, sorry, no, you're right. Thank you. You're, you're right. 13 was correct. Can we go back to that, please, sis? Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only the ones who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons? And in your name perform miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Another version says, you workers of iniquity. I want to go back to the beginning. Where he says, ask and it will be given to you. Now, church, indulge me for a minute. Just for a minute. I remember not so long ago that I heard I had my first child, my son. And when my son was born, my life changed. As I reminisce, it was such a wonderful moment. It was the best moment of my life, barring salvation. When I looked at my son and I held him in my arms, I knew then that I was going to be everything, everything to my son. I wanted him to love me. I, wanted to lo I was going to pour every ounce of my love into this young, young man. I wanted to build such a bond with him, such a bond. And that I did. So much so, I used to carry my son with me everywhere. And I carried him to the gym once. And a man said, Listen, can I have a word with you? And, he said, and I said, yeah, cool. He said to me, I have never, ever seen a, a, a father and son relationship like yours. And he started to cry. He started to cry. That was the... Uh, I love my son to death. How much more? But before I say how much more, my mum often used to say to me, Connell, you know I love you. But let me tell you this. No one can love you like your father. No one can love you like God. As much as I love you, I can't, I can't love you like God loves you. And that's a truth. A truth that we need to hold on to. Are you hearing me? We need to hold on to that truth. God wants a relationship with us. The relationship that I was determined to have with my son, how much more do you think that God wants that relationship between you and me? God's saying, ask and it will be given to you. Ask that I am that I am. That I am that can do everything. That I am that created the heavens and the earth and everything therein. That I am that can do more than even you can imagine. He wants a relationship with you and me. It's imperative to have that relationship. It's all good we pray in the ad hoc prayer. It's not good enough. It's really not good enough. And you'll see why. He made us in his image. And he made us perfect. He was pleased with what he made. He was determined, just as I was determined, and even more, to bond with his children. And then you go on to where he says, seek 
and you will find me. Seek and you will find me. And I don't know, personally, that takes me to Jeremiah. You know, the famous scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. Yeah? I know, the, not to bring you harm, but to bring you hope and a future. What was he talking about? At that time, Israel was rebellious. God was tired of the talking. He, he, he said, come to me, ask me anything. I'll do, I'm your God. But Israel kept on going elsewhere. And they kept on rebelling against their father. So what does he do? He uses Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, to take Israel into captivity. So while they're in captivity, he's not said, you know something, I'm done with you. He says, I have a plan. I have a plan for you. And I'm saying this to say this. Some of us, some of you out there, or whoever's listening, might be in their own Babylon, in their own place of captivity. God hasn't left you. He has a plan to bring you hope and a future. Some of us, we have to admit, we are rebellious. We don't always do what we're told to do. We go our own way. But God is a God not to be played with. <laughs> Salvation costs so much. We can't play with the price that it costs. He goes on to say, then you will call upon me and I will answer, I will listen to you. You will seek me and you will find me. When you seek me with all your heart, that's what I wanted my boy to do. Seek me with all his heart and I'll give you in the world. How much more will God give you what you desire? Seek me with all your heart. God wants us to seek him with all our heart. And here's the nice one, the good thing about it. He says, knock the door and that door will be open. So you're in your dark period. You might be in darkness right now. But if you knock that door, you're seeking with all your heart, you knock that door, he says, that door will be open. So from darkness, back into the light. Amen? So there's a hope for you. The writer to the Hebrews in chapter 12, verse 5, he says, he, he, he says, my son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when God rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves. He punishes everyone he accepts as sons and daughters. Don't, don't look at it so grievous. It's an indication that God loves us. If he just left us, we'd be in trouble. I'm telling you now, guys, if you are living in sin, and you've done bad things. And you seem to be getting on all right in the world and in life. You're in trouble. I'm telling you. If you see that God hasn't rebuked you or you're not paying for it, you're going to pay for it in the next life to come. Yeah? Welcome the punishment. It's an indication that God loves you. You're not an illegitimate child. You are legitimate. He loves you. He loves you and me. Yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then we go on to um, 13. Verse 13. He says, Enter in at the narrow gate. A wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there will be that go in thereat. 
Because narrow is the gate which leads to life. And few, are you hearing me? Few that find it. That's an indication that there are standards. God has standards. And its standards are to be met. And one of those standards are a relationship with God. A right relationship with God. We can't get away from that. We can't lean on to our own understanding. Thinking that, you know, so if I just do this, I just do that. Right, I'm good. No. The word says, Matthew 4, 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God means we need to be reading regularly, daily. Yeshua says, narrow is the gate, the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. For me, I believe that is the most curious verse in the whole Bible. For me, I don't know about you. Serious. However, being one who is not shy to go out and evangelize and tell people about God and want desires for people to be saved, it bothers me, and that's just me. It doesn't have to bother you. That just bothers me. That this word is seldom preached in the church. Why is that? Why is that? Is it because the churches want to keep the congregation, keep the numbers up high, be, keep friends, be friends, and just tippy-toe around the truth? I, mean, I didn't say this, you know, about the, um, why there's a road. God, you know, Jesus said it. Yeshua said it. It's his words. So don't listen to me. Listen to the word. Read the word it tells you. Have we become, like as Timothy said, those who seek only to hear what their itching ears want to hear when we, want to, when we come to church and listen to a message? We want a good message that makes us feel good. And Well, this message doesn't make me feel good. It frightens me. It's a kick at the rear end, keeping me on my toes. And it's to keep all of us on our toes because God loves us all. He desires that none should perish. None of us. I'm so glad that you're receiving this. Serious. I, 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 I was nervous in, in bringing this word because I ain't got time for all this, you know. I want to hear something nice. But it's ain't time for no nice, nice. Because if you keep on getting the nice, nice, when you get there, he's going to tell you something else. You understand? Oh, you should have told me. You should have told me. We need to hear the truth. Why? Why? Because the truth will set us free. Amen. Jesus didn't mince words sometimes. You know, he was, Jesus, was, Jesus was lovely, meek, mild. But sometimes he never ramped. The Canaanite woman came. Oh, my daughter, she's possessed with a demon. Called the woman a dog. That's not easy. He says, if you want to follow me and be my disciple, you're going to have to hate your mother, your father, your son and your daughter if you want to be my disciple. That's hard hearing. But you need to read that for context. Yeah, that might ha sound difficult for some. But when we don't read the word, we don't get it. How? What did Jesus mean by that? Hate my father. You must say mad. No, sir. Jesus says, put me first. Put me first. S Matthew 6, 
um, 31. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these things I will add unto thee. Seek me first. Seek me first and I'm going to keep on jamming, ramming it in. He wants a relationship. Imperative in moving forward. Why did Jesus, I'm going to try and be brief. Why did Jesus speak so harshly at times? You know, in John, John 66, it tells you, no, John 6, 66, tells you that many of Christ's disciples left him. They couldn't take his sayings. It was harsh, too harsh for them. And they left him and they ended up betraying the man. When, when Christ used to speak in the manner that he used to speak in, there's a reason. He, he, he spoke in the manner because he cares. He doesn't want any of us to perish. Yeah? He also knew the price that he was going to pay, have to pay. Just the other day, we had Passover, the death and the resurrection of Christ, our Lord and Savior. How many of us have forgotten about it and just carried on? I like when Peter uses his words, I want to bring to your remembrance. We need to remember. We need to be reminded. Christ, Christ didn't just, Christ wasn't just taken and say, yo, come, you're going to the cross. <laughs> Dead. Think about it. He knew the price he was going to have to pay. From the dining table, true to Gethsemane, to Golgotha. That was a journey and a half. That was a journey. They brutalized the man. The man was innocent. They brutalized him. They could have just sent him to the cross. But no, they had to ridicule him. They had to brutalize him. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he says, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass. He knew the severity of what he was going to go through. Do we appreciate that which he went through? That's why he could talk harsh at times to some of his disciples. He knew the, pray, the, the price that he would have to pay. When Christ talks in the manner that he does, he's trying to direct us and guide us. Let's go on to verses 21 to 23. He says, Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out demons and in thy name done wonderful works? What these guys didn't understand was the power of his name. It wasn't because of them. It was his name that allowed the demons to be delivered. For all these wonderful works that they had done. But there's two aspects to this. He says, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord. Look, go back to uh, Matthew 6. And he gives a description. He speaks about the Pharisees and the, um, the uh, teachers of the law. He said, listen, these guys, they stand on street corners, dressed up to the nines praying and getting the glory from all that's around them. Hypocrites. That's what he called them. Hypocrites. He said, to, he's saying to us today, don't 
about to follow them. Go and pray to me privately. Everything you do, do it privately, and I will reward you openly. They've already got their rewards. Yeah? They've already got their rewards. He's saying, guys, those guys are saying, listen, you did everything for your glory. When you were casting out demons, when you were using my name, it wasn't about me. We didn't have a relationship. But I allowed you to cast out demons because I wanted those demons to be cast out. But you never did it because of me. Away from you. I know you not, you workers of iniquity. Iniquity basically it means to miss the mark. A violation of the law. Wickedness. Enmity to God. The flesh is enmity to God. It speaks about that in Romans 8. He says in Romans 8, sticking with Romans 8, he says, for now there's no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. With that said, that means when you're walking after the spirit, if you agree, say amen. When you're walking after the spirit, there's no sin. You, there's no occasion for the flesh, correct? No occasion for the flesh. So for them... There is no condemnation. But here the different, the second aspect we need to look at. The backbiting. The lying. The slandering. The envy. Jealousy. These are not of God. See if you can enter into the kingdom of God with all that. Think again. Think again. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. And you know something? I'm saying it to all of you. Forget it. I'm saying it to me. And this is not a judgment. So before you get this twisted, this is not a judgment. I'm going to just be brief on something what happened to me a while ago. Just going to be brief. There was a time I thought I was being disrespected. There was a situation where I consulted a few pastors and said, listen, I need to do this. Am I right in doing the, what I intend to do? They said, Connor, you are right. Go and do it and I'll bless you. Went, to, went and did it. And it was just not that occasion, but there were different occasions. <coughs> And I felt I was being slighted somewhat. And for me, it was, it was a bit too much. And I'll tell you why, because this, this has been going on for a while. And one, a couple of brothers came to me and said, what's going on there, see? So I knew it wasn't just in my head. And I thought, you know something? <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'm going to demand some respect. I'll tell you what, they disrespect me openly, I'm going to rebuke him openly. Amen? Yeah. You with me? Just rebuke him. So yeah, man, this thing has to stop. But at that time, I just, out of nowhere, I'm speaking to Brother Manis on the phone. And just off the cuff, I said, bro, what are you preaching on this this week? He says, I'm preaching on um, in First Peter 3. So it must have been a day after. I didn't have time to have a look at it. I thought, let me have a look and see what my brother's dealing with. Open the book, chapter 3, and a verse just jumped out at me. It's like I was on one page, but on the other page, these few words were magnified. It says, do not repay evil for evil. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> 
No word of a lie. No word of a lie. Church, my first words were, whoa. Serious. But guess what? It showed me that I've got a relationship with the Father because he spoke to me. He wants to speak to us. He wants a right relationship with us. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds to talk to the mouth of God. We need to read the word. To understand God, we need to read and study about him. Know his character. Know his will for our lives. Amen? Listen. What God was saying to me there, he said, Kono, you think you're being righteous, but you're going to rip you openly? That's the flesh. That's not of me. That's because your flesh was hurt. So you're going to deal with them back in the flesh and think that you're doing it on behalf of God? No. Fix up. Fix up. So when I say this to you, I'm first talking to me. Because none of us are perfect. We need to fix our business. Church. Church. Listen, hatred is equal to murder in God's eyes. The backbiting, the envy, the negative things, the slander, speaking behind your brother's back, your brothers and your sisters' back. It's not the one. This chapter 7 is part of the Sermon on the Mount. Five to seven, chapter five to seven is about the Sermon on the Mount. What is the Sermon on the Mount about? It's about love. Jesus said, I've not come to abolish the law. I've come to fulfill it. How is he going to fulfill it? In love. He come to my, he's, he's trying to let us know the law is being underpinned by love and love alone. If a brother strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him to the left. Because if you don't, you don't resist evil. Christ was asked the question, what are the two greatest commandments? The first of them were, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind, your body and your soul. The second is, love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you love your neighbor... As yourself, you want to be forgiven for your trespasses. I want you to forgive me, sis. If I do something to you, I want you to forgive me. Because God forgave you. God forgave me. God wants us to emulate himself. He said, when you love one another, you show the world that you are my disciples. We're here to represent the Father. Jesus says, listen, if your righteousness doesn't surpass that of the, fa the Pharisees and the Sadducees, in no wise shall you enter into the kingdom of heaven. There's a standard that needs to be met, saints. Don't be fooled by some of this lovely preaching and John 10.10. 10. I've come to give you life and life abundantly. And you start thinking, say, yeah, worldly goods. Yeah, it's going to enrich me with you know, material things. Now, don't get this twisted. I'm not, listen, if you've earned, if you, you earned your material stuff, honestly, you're blessed. That's your portion. I'm not talking about that. It's when, when seeking after material things is your word. God's not into that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Saints, listen, I've, I think I've gone over time. But I pray thee, I pray thee that you hold on, that you hold to that truth, the truth. This is God's word. And he wants to set you free. Listen, if this morning, you woke up and you were slandering a brother or a sister. 
Don't watch that. <laughs> Why? We have a God full of grace. If you've done anything out of, out of line today, forget it. Just go to the Father and say, Father, you alone have I sinned against. And I repent of my sins. I repent. Once you repent, it's forgotten. So if that's your nature, you have the opportunity to change it. Glory be to God. Full of mercy, full of grace. Amen? It's not the end of the world. We need to be going through the narrow gate. And by that, we, know, we need to know our maker. We need to know his good will and purpose for our lives. Ephesians 2.10 says, I created you unto good works that you should walk in them. Amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, almighty God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Father God, we're asking that you would forgive us today for all the trespasses we've committed, for not having that right relationship with you, oh Father God, for not spending the time that you desire for us to spend with you, oh Lord. We're asking for forgiveness, oh Lord, and we know that you are true and you're faithful to forgive. Lord, we want to make it through that narrow gate. We don't want to hear those damning words away from me. I know you're not. But what we do want to hear is, well done, good and faithful servant. Father, I pray that you have your marvelous way in and through us. I pray that we, from today, Lord, we will live to shine a light, your light, unto others. That we will pour out our love unto others. And if we have anything negative to say about anyone, we will remember these words. The narrow gate. The narrow gate. Lord, without you, we need, <laughs> without you, we're nothing. We need you, Lord. We so need you. So, Father, as a loving God, I pray you do not leave us nor forsake us. But keep us in your will. And this we ask in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Amen and amen. Thank you. God has been good and his, his word has been pure, unfiltered. Amen. Amen. Pastor Joe, can I just ask you to dismiss us? We thank you, dear Father, for every blessing. Thank you for your word, dear Father. We want to continue to praise and bless your name and take us all safely throughout this day and that our hearts will be always pointing towards you. We bless your name, Lord. Thank you for the abundance you have given to us. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>